All right, it's shop time. All right, guys, welcome to my new vlog update series on Sierra Railway 1929. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different from Word in the Shop. I'm sort of revamping the series and uh, trying to make it a little more interesting and entertaining each episode. So, uh, well, let's get into it. Today's February 28th, 2015, and 80 years ago, the Angels Branch saw its very last revenue train. On March 1st, service to Angels Camp was officially abandoned by the Sierra Railway Company of California, and within five or six months, all of the rails that once ran between Jamestown and Angels were completely removed, and all traces of the railroad to Calaveras County were erased. Okay guys, the first thing we're going to take a look at in this new shop time blog is Sierra Railway flat car number 41. This model I nearly finished building oh, about three four weeks ago so around the end of January. Uh, actually I had started it a couple of years ago most of the car has been laser cut um, back in my days of high school when I had access to a laser cutter machine I actually cut the the side sills and center sills of this flat car on the laser uh, but since then it's pretty much been sitting uh, because the biggest setback being the swing motion arch bar trucks it is impossible to find them in HO scale uh, HO scale standard gauge that is so I had to go and build them myself which took a little bit of time but they turned out very very nice thanks to a jig that I made uh, and the car looks fairly accurate. It's probably the most accurate model of a, uh, and the most accurate HO scale model of a Hammond Car Company style flat car, uh, which the Sierra had built some of theirs based on. They had a few cars that they had purchased new from Hammond, and they also uh, built their own. Of course, no update of mine would be complete without Sierra number 30 being in it. So not much has changed since the last time you saw her, which is probably a good thing that I haven't taken her apart or anything. Uh, she's still running. She has received some minor maintenance work with the uh, running gear on the fireman's side. Uh, so the side that you're looking at now, I had to tweak the running gear a little bit. Uh, problem being that the running gear itself is scratch built, so all of the joints had to be custom made. Uh, the joints are actually brass wire. Uh, fitted through the uh, the radius rod and the eccentric crank uh, and then to hold it in place I solder the end of it and uh, in order to keep the solder from getting on the uh, brass uh, the uh, the brass uh, rods uh, I had to paint the ends where I'd be soldering them so that the solder wouldn't stick it actually worked out pretty well but it did take a few tries to get it perfect um, uh, so it ended up, anyway, part of that uh, eccentric mechanism ended up coming off, so I had to uh, repair it. Uh, but other than that, uh, the 30 has been pretty reliable. Uh, I got a couple of problems fixed with uh, connections beneath the cab. Uh, there were a couple of, um, well, well, the, the water feed lines that run underneath the cab to the tender, you can kind of see them above the uh, rear trailing truck. Uh, those are the electrical lines to the motor uh, and both of those have been repaired and uh, before before I had repaired them they were uh, moving a little bit which over time eventually caused the uh, wires that were soldered to them to break uh, so I came up with a kind of a jig to anchor them to the cab floor uh, which thankfully has held up very well. I get barely any movement out of them when I uh, plug and unplug the tender. Uh, so that's great. One detail that I've added to CR number 30 since the last update is the air plumbing that runs from the air compressor to the uh, air tank on the fireman's side. You can see it. Uh, let me zoom in here. Right there you can see it kind of wraps around and then feeds into the air tank. I'm really proud of that because it's very prominent in photographs of the engine. Uh, so that's one detail I've added. Uh, another one is the, well actually two, is the uh, armrest for the cab. And I have sort of filed them away a little bit so that uh, it looks like uh, 
as the crewman would rest their arm on it that it would depress in certain places while in other places uh, it remains the same so that was one uh, really cool thing that I did it looks like it's actually made of leather uh, the way I filed it and the way that it's uh, painted so that turned out really really nice I'm not sure if you can see it there the other one's a little easier to see um, but yeah there's that so I think that's turned out really well um, another detail that I've gotten around to uh, tweaking is the bell and the bell cord I've added the bell cord um, and uh, I probably would have done that a lot earlier but the thing was I had to replace the bell on Sierra number 30 because uh, I had ended up breaking the joints for uh, I had ended up breaking the bell a while back because it was a rigid bell it doesn't swing and this one doesn't either I ended up breaking the previous one and I tried soldering it back together but it just didn't look right uh, so I ended up making that into a a bell that actually does swing so I turned it from a rigid bell into one that swings but it didn't look really it, it didn't look very good at all so I ended up replacing it with this one this time I was a lot more careful um, and uh, I put the little clapper for the bell back you can see that little that kind of little uh, what looks like a, a uvula kind of hanging from the bell I guess that's a bad example but yeah I added that because the rigid ball top bells don't come with it uh, so th I think it really looks good uh, I did a good job on it this time and uh, well, that's about it for Sierra number 30 for this update so let's move on to the rest so other than the doorknob in the picture can anybody recognize the scene that I'm trying to replicate here if you guess Jamestown you're right so this is the new Jamestown module that I've had for about a month now been working on it um, and I've got most of the track laid already which is very quickly that I've been able to do it um, down here is the end of the angels branch on the module and this is code 40 rail and yes you can actually operate trains over code 40 rail in HO scale so uh, I've been using Proto 87 track laying materials and that is what has allowed me to uh, keep the rail anchored down without uh, the flanges, the wheel flanges for my equipment bumping over anything uh, so if it was any smaller than this I'd probably have a, an issue but uh, Code 40 rail is still large enough to operate uh, newer HO scale equipment over it. Uh, stuff from more than 15, 20 years ago would probably have a lot deeper flanges, so they probably wouldn't work. Um, but the stuff that I'm using has had, I have had zero issues with uh, Code 40 track. Uh, but aside from that, I still have to put the switch down. It will be going in place about there, going on to the Angels Branch siding track and then there's one more little spur track over there next to the, the siding uh, I haven't laid this track down yet the one next to the Angels Branch main track that is uh, right now I've put down some code 83 flex track to kinda mark out where it goes and how the track contours uh, around what I've already put down and so that's what I've got my car sitting on down there uh, and hopefully in the next month I can have pretty much all the track done I'll be ordering some more Proto 87 materials hopefully pretty soon and then uh, once all the track is done I can focus on getting all of the ties in place um, which you can see that there's still uh, quite a few ties that haven't been put down yet so I'll be uh, putting those in place hopefully in the next month and a half and getting some uh, scenery on it and hopefully in the next couple of months I'll start working on the Jamestown General Office building the freight depot is going to take quite a bit longer because it's so big it'll be an involved project so that's the Jamestown module so let's move on to the next bit this is my scratch built model of Sierra Railway Sheffield motor car B it was just identified as B for some reason when I went to check it out but uh, this car was fairly easy to build. I think I started it back in uh, December when I got measurements of the prototype at Railtown 1897. But it was, it's was it been sitting around since then 
because I haven't been able to find wheels for it until just recently uh, where I went to Grantline's uh, store, Grantline Products. I went to their store here in Concord and I was able to find some Fairmont 16 inch wheel sets uh, and I put them on the car and it looks great. There's still a few details that I have to add like the engine and possibly a transmission, uh, fuel tank battery boxes and things like that. Still have to put in place but it looks good and I can finally put it on display on my modules so you'll probably see it in some pictures and videos and yes the wheels move. Uh, part of my ambition for this project one day is to uh, install a micro motor in it and have it running down the track behind my trains. So it's a little bit of a crazy idea, but hey, you never know what 10 to 15 years, what technology we'll have for model railroading. So, so that's that project. So this is my model of Sierra Railway flat car number 33. It's basically identical to Sierra number 41, and according to documents I have, it was also built in Jamestown in the shops. Uh, it is a Hammond style flat car so it like I said is pretty much identical to the 41 so it has the same trucks which is why I haven't gotten any for the car yet because I have to build them and it's gonna take uh, it'll probably take about a week and a half maybe two weeks at the most worth of work that's not working full-time of course but uh, the car has been painted the truss rods are done I still have to do the brake rigging on both of these cars but uh, the immediate thing, the immediate goal for this car right now is to complete the bolsters and then at that point since it has its couplers and truss rods and all that I can work on the trucks uh, and the goal is to have this car decaled with trucks uh, along with number 41 at the Sierra Railway Seminar in April uh, which I'll advertise that it is on Saturday April 18th from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m at the Sonora Elk Slide, and you can do a Google search for that because I can't remember the address. Um, it is being held on the same day as the West Side Reunion, also known as the Logging Modelers Reunion, and that's going to be at the same location from 9 to 3.30, so there will be a 30-minute break between the seminar and the Logging Reunion, but they are on the same day, and that's, again, that's Saturday, April 18th, 2015, of course. The following day for the seminar, because we won't be able to include a field trip on that Saturday, the following day on Sunday, April 19th, we'll be having a field trip to the Angels Branch in the afternoon, but in the morning we'll be making a trip to Railtown 1897 for uh, engineer Dave Tadlock to give us a presentation on firing up Sierra number 3. So that'll be something to see. Anyway, that's a little plug for the seminar, but anyway, back to the flat car. It should be done by the seminar. Uh, along with a lot of my other models. Uh, hopefully I'll have two Sierra flat cars, which would be great. Uh, since this is the 80th year that the Angels Branch has been abandoned, I can replicate the train that Sierra number 30 pulled up the Angels Branch with. Uh, I have a picture of two flat cars being pulled by the locomotive. Unfortunately, I can't show it here uh, because it is a Western Railway Museum archival photo and I need special permission in order to post it publicly. But anyway, uh, so yeah, that's Sierra Railway flat car number 33. Hope you enjoyed that little segment. So let's move on. Okay guys, now we're going to be doing something a little bit different. In this shop time vlog and in ones to follow, maybe not every single one, but I will be attempting to review uh, pieces of rolling stock that I purchased from uh, model railroad retail stores. So cars that are produced by uh, manufacturers, mass produced cars that you can go out and buy yourself. I'll be reviewing those cars and their detail and uh, giving it an approval rating. Uh, so, yeah, this car is the Santa Fe GA-4 Gondola, built new in 1920. It's made by Intermountain Railway Company. Uh, it is a fairly accurate car based on this photograph that you can see here. Uh, I really like it. This is in the as-built configuration. Uh, it is very well detailed. Uh, there are a few shortcomings though that I'm about to explain. One of the issues I have with this model was uh, the trucks that it originally came with, uh, the ones you see here, uh, they're not entirely accurate as far as I can see uh, compared to the photo. Uh, they are technically the right type of truck, USRA 50 ton Andrews trucks, 
uh, but they don't look quite right. Uh, so I ended up swapping them out with uh, Tahoe Model Works trucks of the same type. Although they are not entirely accurate either, they are uh, slightly more, uh, they're a little closer to the uh, trucks shown on the car in the photo. Uh, one thing I do really like about this car is the lettering is all very, very crisp. And uh, as far as I can see in the photograph, uh, it is all in the right place. It is very, very nice. Uh, and that, uh, I really commend uh, Intermountain for that. Another issue I have with this car are the stirrups on the corners. Uh, they're molded onto the car body uh, and they are very fragile. This is apparently isn't an incredibly high quality plastic. Uh, Several of them have already uh, halfway snapped off. I was able to uh, glue them back into place before they completely broke off. And, uh, but they are very fragile and unless you're really, really careful, they will come off fairly easily. So uh, that's, another, that's another thing that I don't like particularly about this model. The end detail on this car is fairly accurate and very crisp. It's very easy to see all the little uh, rivets and uh, bolts and things like that on the end of the car. The handrails are uh, separately applied. It, it appears to be they're very sturdy. Uh, none of them have had any sign of uh, breaking off or anything. Um, the car does have its own molded on air hose that it comes with it and I have had no problems with that. Um, the couplers that came with this car were standard metal KD couplers. Uh, not the scale head kind, just the regular kind. They, the car did come with those, which is better than the plastic uh, uh, McHenry couplers. Much a great improvement over that. Although I did replace the, I did replace the um, the Katie couplers with Sergeant couplers uh, because Sergeant couplers are my preference. Uh, so that's good that they did come with metal Katie couplers, so they're ready for any NMRA layout. Another thing I really like about this car is the uh, detail inside the, uh, the bedding, the, uh, the flatbed portion of the car. Uh, it is very, very well detailed. Uh, you can see each individual panel. This car is not a drop bottom gondola style. Um, and it did not come with a load, uh, so I'm kind of glad for that because if it had, then more than likely the uh, detail would have been left out. Um, but it is a very nice car. I uh, also would like to point out that it is weighted to the NMRA standard. Um, so it's a fairly heavy car, even without a load in it. The brake rigging on the bottom of the car is also very, very nice. It is all complete. Uh, there is a slight issue that I have with uh, part of it, and that is the airline that runs the length of the car. It is uh, supposed to attach to the car body with um, male female sort of uh, connection or it slips into a socket to hold it in place uh, it was not in perfect condition the pipe should be pretty much perfectly straight but it's uh, slightly warped because of the type of plastic that it's made out of okay guys I hope you like that review of an Intermountain Railway Company Atchison Topeka and Santa Fe GA-4 gondola uh, I really like this car. If I had to rate it out of 10 stars, I'd give it an 8, but I would take off a couple for the uh, defects and the details that I mentioned. Uh, but overall, this is the type of detail that a prototype modeler should achieve uh, on their layout. It is a fairly accurate car. Uh, out of the box, you really don't need to do any work to it, which is what I really like about it. So I uh, hope you like this review. Stay tuned for more in the next few shop time vlogs. And, uh, well, let's get on with the rest of the video. Alright guys, this is the freelance part of the tour. I'll just be walking around the room showing you various things that I haven't talked about yet. Uh, the first thing that I see here is uh, the Jamestown Motor Car Shed. It hasn't really gotten much better since the last video. Uh, although I started to add the corrugated siding on the bottom half. There was actually more of it on there, but I guess... Uh, when it was moving around some of it came off so I'll have to put that back in place uh, but uh, yeah not much has changed on that uh, let's move down the list Sierra 
uh, Sierra Railway Combination Coach Caboose Number Nine hasn't really nothing's really happened with that. Uh, this here Sierra Railway Number Twenty Eight's tender frame. I actually started that a while back. And here's the tender cistern for her. Uh, I started these projects a while back, uh, but it's kind of a slow road uh, building these. The frame is a little more involved than on the 30 and 32, uh, so I had to go and measure the prototype to try and get it more accurate. So I did that. Now it just needs its decking, and I need to do the underside. I need to give it some trucks. I'll be using KD arch bar trucks for that. Other than that, the tender frame's pretty much done. Uh, it does still need its steps and a few other things, but yeah, it's pretty much done, and I'll be able to put the tender cistern on it. I'm hoping to have the entire tender done for the seminar. Course number 28 over here will not be done for that, but uh, yeah, if I get the tender done, that'll be one less thing that I need to finish later, so that's why I'm working on it now in my spare time. And then just some freight cars. It's a Westerfield BX11 Santa Fe boxcar. Their first uh, type of single oh, uh, single sheath boxcar. That's the very first kind that they ordered. Uh, so I'm making a model of that because they appeared on the Sierra very frequently. Uh, West Side flat car, Carter Brothers flat. Uh, this is their logging cars back in the old days. I'm working on that sort of in my downtime. Uh, let's move down here. Sierra Railway Caboose number 04 is receiving a new frame. Uh, the old one that I had built for it looked absolutely... It, it didn't resemble a real freight car frame or a caboose frame. It didn't resemble anything. It was just put in there so I could uh, put trucks on it and put it down the track. But now I'm getting to the point where I know what the prototype's frame looked like, so I'm building that. This is kind of a slower project because... Um, I'm still working on how to make the frame removable uh, so that if I ever need to add any detail work to it, it'll be a little bit easier. Uh, caboose number five is right next to it. This one does have the prototype frame. That's what the frame looks like on these cars. Uh, so I added that to this one here, but I don't know when I'm going to be finishing that. So I'm working on number four right now, or 04. These are its trucks. Uh, these are the same type of trucks that I'll be using on Sierra number 28's tender frame. Uh, I'll be making some modifications to the bolsters and the springs. Uh, will be replaced with leaf springs, uh, but yeah, other than that, they're pretty much the same trucks. Uh, so that's uh, caboose number 04 and 05. Uh, over here is a standard depot. Really nothing has happened to this one since the last video, except that... Uh, I'm not even sure if I had this in the last video or not. The uh, decking on the on the uh, building has uh, started to go down, although I kind of ran out, so I'll have to uh, buy some more 2x12s to finish that. Uh, but yeah, after the, after the decking is all done, then I need to look for some siding for the building. I'm still having some trouble identifying the right type of siding and the measurements of it. Uh, but once that's done, I hope to have this at the Sierra Railway Seminar. Um, I probably will bring it, whether or not it has its siding in place. So, uh, yeah, that's that. The standard module is kind of um, not really doing anything with it right now. Uh, I need to replace all of the track with Code 55 rail. I used Code 70 up until recently, and I found out that Code 55, uh, code 55 rail more closely matches uh, the 60 pound rail that the Sierra Railway was using in the late 1920s so the main line track needs to be replaced with code 55 and the sightings might be code 40 which is kind of what I've been doing on Jamestown the main tracks are code 55 but the Angels branch is code 40 um, anyway and uh, you can kind of see that the Jamestown module is in the place of uh, Atlas Junction, I actually took whatever I could off of the Atlas Junction module and put Jamestown on the top of it because I don't have anywhere to put Jamestown right now until I take Standard off uh, until I take Standard down and then I can put Jamestown up in its place uh, but yeah a lot of changes have been going around a lot, uh, a lot of changes have been happening around the shop lately so uh, that's pretty much it for this update video I hope you enjoyed my little history segment in the beginning and the review I did on the Intermountain Gondola. So uh, yeah, check back for the next Shop Time blog, 
And, uh, well, that's pretty much it.